Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz, and welcome back to Satisfactory, where last time we made our biggest, baddest, and most insane machine yet. Our new Crystal Oscillator Factory, with 48 manufacturers and produces 90 crystal oscillators per minute. However, we're using the default recipe for this project, and oh man, oh man, does this machine hunger! for resources, like literally thousands of quartz and iron ingots. But due to some extremely well done belt work, all of the resources only need to go through these nine belts to feed the machine. So quartz crystals, cables, and the reinforced iron plates for each three lines. And then our beautiful creation can come to life. So our goal today is to feed the great machine and make it operational. And luckily, we have this massive, massive floor here to do so. So we're gonna need hundreds of constructors and, oh gosh, almost a hundred assemblers to put this bad boy together. Because the quartz crystals, they're pretty simple. They just need one constructor. Easy, set, done. The cables? Only need two constructors, one for the wire, one for the cables, and that's pretty simple too. But then things get a little bit more spicy for the reinforced iron plates, because they need to be made in a assembler here, and require both iron plates and screws. Since we're using this alternate recipe that uses 10 plates and 24 screws, yeah. So boom, and a bop. And just checking my notes here, it's looking like we're gonna need 1,260 cables, okay, 360 reinforced iron plates, and 900 quartz crystals. Yeah, this is gonna be one of those projects here. At least we have our iron wire recipe that just uses the iron ingots for wire, so that's like all the cables, which is one thing off the list. And then all the quartz we need is just on the top of the iron spine here. So we just need to bring it up a little bit further to this area, and then we're cooking. So let me gather all of the materials up to this floor, and then we'll start putting some things together. All right, this is what I'm talking about, brother. The iron spine has been extended, and the quartz segment bridge is completed. So now we have all of the quartz up there, ready to go. But far more importantly, guys, it finally happened. After long last, our uh, thin gray square production is complete. AKA our smelter array. That's taking the 10,140 iron ore and just processing it into ingots. Oh my goodness. This might be the single longest running project in our entire world. Like there are 338 smelters in this array to get all the iron processed. And little by little, I mean chipping away at it on live streams, and now it's actually finally done. And now hopefully, we'll never have to worry about iron ingots again. Or maybe we will, because the project we're working on today is gonna be using a quarter of our iron supply, just for this one production. But basha, who needs to worry about iron right now? Let's worry about quartz, yeah our beautiful pink quartz, because this, this is gonna be useful, because we have an ample supply of it. And for this project today, we're going to need 1,800 quartz, so that's two full 780 lines, and then a 240 line, and I just did a little bit of load balancing to create, so it's a splitter, one is a 780 line going out, and then there's two 120 lines that go into a 140 line, and yeah. It all measures out just fine. And this project will work out just fine, because it's quartz. It's a one-stop shop. Oh, and guys, I have an excellent idea I have to share with you with our quartz crystal constructors. So we need to make 60 of these bad boys to process all of the quartz, and I had a great idea. Well, the first one was to make like a weird looking kind of constructor array wherein there'd be a middle like hub floor where all of the processed crystals would go to. Now do something like this. And that would look pretty cool at the end of the day. 
Unfortunately though, I'd have to tear out all the constructors, so it's like constructor here, empty spot, constructor, empty spot, etc, etc. And I was only able to fit in 30 into this space. And I want to try and get all the constructors into this space, so... Building only half the amount we need is not really satisfactory. So instead, I have a pretty funny idea that we're just gonna try and make work. We are going to attempt to build the Mini Beast. So this Mini Beast will only be making the quartz crystals, but we're gonna try and go for the cool, like, waterfall design that the original beast has. So the constructors output their items into the middle here. They all go down. We'll have to figure out the bottom floor a little later on. But it will look kind of like this. With all of the quartz crystals flowing down into the lower floors where they'll kind of group all together and eventually make their way to the crystal oscillator factory. Then I'll have another top layer of more constructors. Uh, the top layer will look a little less good than the middle layers, but I'll try and make it look a little spicy. And I'll try and fit in the 60 constructors this way. Now, we only have... What is this? 10? 20? We only have 20 in right now. Probably on the top floor, I'll be able to fit in another... 30? If I'm lucky? So that'll be cool. And then, I had the best idea ever! Why don't we just build down? Because beneath here... Is nothing. So we can just add another floor onto these pillars, bring some of the crystals up, and we're done. Now, I could have done that with the first design, but now everything's already redesigned, and I like this idea better, so we're gonna go for it! And it's gonna look very spicy when done. Okay, spicy is one word for this, but uh, an absolute cluster mess is another. Generally though, I did get like, kind of the same look. Instead of having like a central waterfall, there's like two central waterfalls? It looks alright. Like I can live with this. In fact, I think it looks pretty good. Like we add in like a couple walls here and there, just built up on these both sides. Do something kind of spicy in the middle. And we have a pretty interesting looking machine here. And since we're just using the overflow method, it's not really hard to put together. Like it, it's really straightforward. Some parts are kind of a mess, like especially the stuff that's going on downstairs. And all this nonsense that's going down at the front lines isn't too uh, neat either. But at the end of the day, I'll be coming up this elevator here, and usually walking in this direction, if I ever enter this floor. And I'll usually only see this at a distance, and at a distance, it's pretty good. And it all works out too. I just have all of the lines merge into the three that are here, and all the inputs just need to go into the three that are here. But you see, here's the problem. Because when making the first beast, I'd had everything set up to look pretty. But once it came time to actually set up the inputs, yeah, things got really bad. Like, really, really, really bad. And with the mini beast here, most of that nastiness is in this front area. But now we have one more little-ish kind of problem to deal with. And that is evenly splitting these three lines. Because we have two 780 lines and one 240 line. So we have to kind of do some load balancing with our poopy pink pies. Oh, what? And some actual quartz. Luckily though, on satisfactorycalculator.com, there is a way to even out all of your inputs. So you just have to copy this design and add it to your world. And like, this is fine, because this isn't my first rodeo with load balancers. We have made plenty before. It's just I've really wanted to try and avoid doing as much load balancing as possible. Because we still have many, 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 many more machines to add in here. However though, we are following the rule of cool, and we will continue to make amazing machines, no matter the cost. And somehow, we'll make this project work out. Well, for the meantime, we can enjoy the mini beast because now it is all done and looking quite spiffy. Gotta say, gotta say. Added in a lot of decorations, a lot of things here and there to make it look a little bit more spicy. And we even have like a walkway to monitor things. So the walkway goes up over here 
This is the output actually, so we can monitor that all nice and close. And there's this little like platform for all the good views. It even has a lookout tower on it. Like what kind of factory has a lookout tower built inside of it? Like <laughs> it's ridiculous. But the view is great. I used the Mark II power poles to just spam wires all over the place. Added in a few windows in behind there and it's done. Everything's done. We could just hook up the quartz crystals right now, but I uh, wanna wait a little bit for that because we have a few other projects to work on. Oh, and before we leave, I even managed to make it look even better, adding in a couple more walls. But okay, we're done with this. We have to move on. We have thousands of more items to mass produce. Specifically though, wires and cables. We need just an ungodly amount of them. We need 3,600 wires per minute. And then how many cables per minute? 2,520 per minute. Very cool. Now this, this is gonna be a little bit much and we are not going to be able to make it look very pretty. I'm just gonna tell you right now. In fact, I think we're just gonna have to do these kind of giant columns of machines again. Pretty much exactly what we did with the smelter array. And I've kind of already counted things out and measured things out. And we will need seven rows of 14 constructors on this layer. And that's all gonna be for our iron wire. Then just above the wire constructors, we're gonna have to build even more constructors. Okay, and I just did the math here too. And we're gonna have to have seven rows of 12 for the cables. And you know what? I think with this part of the project, this is something we're gonna be chipping away at. Like, there's no way I'm getting this done today. Like the smelter array took us almost a month. This will probably take another two weeks. So today then, we're just gonna try and figure out the proper pattern to use for this project. Something we can just copy for the rest of the floor. And I just realized that I can't just do these rows of 13, at least not for the iron wire recipe. Because 67.5 times 13 is like 18, 820-ish? And that can't fit on our 780 lines. Oh, actually, it's 877.5. So yeah, that's bad. So already, like, before we even really got started, we have to change up the design here. So these are gonna have to be rows of 11. Oh, ay ay ay, but if these are in rows of 11, the floor won't be able to handle all of the constructors. Like, we'd have to put, like, a couple over here and over there and all over the place and... Ooh, things start to get nasty. Okay, I went into the numbers, I've dug deep, and I found out what we have to do. We have to isolate the cable manufacturing and just the wire manufacturing. Because we'll need just individual wires for the reinforced iron plates. And then we need some wires for cables. So the wires for the cables are going to be their own little system, and the wires for the reinforced iron plates will be over in some other system. This is the only way it's going to work. And kind of like the most clean numbers I could figure out are having four of the iron wire constructors go into nine cable constructors. And then we just repeat that pattern until we have enough cables. Okay, and I guess this is going to have to be our repeatable pattern. So like I said, the four wire constructors to the nine cable constructors. And then I'm using the dual overflow method. So half the constructors overflow from the right side, then the other half from the left, and then in the middle, everything merges together. Now checking out the math here, if we go to the cables, we need how many cables again? 1,260. So... 9 times 15 is 135, which represents one row, and 1,260 divided by 135 equals 9.3333333333 repeating. Okay. So that means, although this system is really nice and clean, we'd have to make 10 copies of it to supply the machine upstairs. Not to mention it'd be a huge waste of space having to make an entire extra row for that 0.3 extra little overflow bit. So I guess this design just has to go. 
Actually, I think we're just gonna have to copy the refill method thing we did with our motor project. And what we did here is we just had one massive loop of wires that went through pretty much all of the assemblers. And then every so often, we just reintroduced more into the system. So when we knew it was about to run out, another supply would come up from downstairs, go and merge onto the line, and continue. And we just continued that for the entire thing, and it ended up working pretty well. So like in a perfect world, we just have the four constructors now. We'll go up. We'll feed through nine machines, then we make another couple constructors downstairs for wire, have it re-merge into this line, and then that pattern just kind of loops and snakes through the entire floor. And I'm considering doing that, but I kind of want to find a little bit of a more efficient solution. Because overflowing through nine machines is going to take forever, man. The wires stack up in stacks of 500. So each of these would have to fill to 500 before really overflowing and being efficient. So to kind of better optimize our pattern, we're going to throw in an extra merger here. And then from downstairs, we'll bring more wire up to remerge in the middle of the line. And that should make things a little bit more quick. Of course, I'm going to have to reorganize things quite a bit to make this fit properly, but that kind of explains the premise. Okay, so I have a solution here. So, half of the items, or the wires, will come up through that side, go through four machines, then they will head down this conveyor lift into this horrible place down here, where the wires will remerge into another two constructors wire supply. And down here when they remerge, we're gonna enter this splitter, where they'll be split up, half of which will go into one constructor up above, and the other half of which is going to continue through the rest of the constructors. And that's kind of like the best I could do, to be honest. It fits in one tile, it kind of just uses a few tiles down there, but that's acceptable, and it works. However though, this might be a solution, but it is just far too complicated to copy, my gosh, like, dozens and dozens of times. Also, we don't have enough room on this entire floor for all of the rows. Like if there's nine here, we'd need nine rows in that direction, and I think we can only fit seven rows of constructors, considering the three tile kind of floor space we're using. So we're gonna bite the bullet, we're actually just gonna destroy this, and then we're still gonna use the same method actually. But instead of trying to squish it down into such a small space, we're just gonna kind of use the proper amount of space for a project like this. So instead of that massive system we had, we're just using one extra tile to have the conveyor lift come up over here, and then everything kind of works the same. Both the lines merge, then they resplit, and the pattern will continue. Oh man, though, why, why me? Why do I do this to myself? I was just about to repeat the pattern for just like a good example, but... <laughs> oh, dude! Ah, oh, it's a good thing, but it's a bad thing. I realize there's an even more efficient way to do this. Okay, so here's our actual final design. So after doing our a few prototypes here, I realized that this is gonna take a lot of space. So, so be it! Then we will use a lot of space, and we're just gonna have everything on one level, like the entire system on one level. So we have the wire constructors here, going into the cable constructors there. And then I set it up so that the constructors for the wires constantly is feeding the overflow system for the cables. So the machines are a little spread out here, emerging their wire production with the main line. And that kind of makes it so that it's like the injector system thing we built before. Except we don't need all the conveyor lifts and the other stuff and the whole jib jab. And now we have a nice modular system that takes about five tiles here with iron going in on the right side and cables coming out on the left. And now we just have to copy this enough times until we have our 1260 cables. So with our final design now, I've done the final measurements hopefully. And it's looking like we can fit all of the cable production in this little box. So this is gonna be dubbed the cable cube. And once it's done, we'll lock up the cube and we'll forget about it forever. 
And that just leaves one last thing. 360 reinforced iron plates that we have to fit into this little area. And just a heads up, that's gonna be like 48 assemblers and 102 constructors. So 150 machines total to make all of those plates. However, that is way too big of a project for today. So we are going to complete that next time, as well as finally hook up all the items to this machine. So I hope you guys enjoyed and thank you for watching, but have a fantastic rest of your day and bye bye